31st of December 2020 sees a huge change to the rules that govern where and how you can fly your drone in the UK as the CAA finally adopts the new EASA rules. Gone is the distinction between hobbyist versus commercial flying and in comes a new framework of rules based on the risk of the flight and the risk to people along with the size of the drone you're actually flying. A lot of it sounds like good common sense but many of you are going to face far harsher restrictions on where you can fly whilst others are going to get surprising new freedoms. So today I'm delving through what rules apply to all of us and what rules are specific to your particular model of drone. Hello, I'm Ian. As you can see, I play with lots of drones and I've had a fun few days reading through the 238 pages of CAP 722, which basically covers all of the rules for flying drones in the UK. The changes come into effect on the 31st of uh, December 2020. So basically, if you're flying a drone in the UK in 2021, these are the rules you're going to need to follow. Things have been heavily complicated by the fact that the new rules are actually all based around new classifications of drone types. But as of now, no drone sold on the UK market is actually carrying these new classifications. So to cater for that, they've had to introduce a two year transition period that allows for these legacy drones, these unclassified drones, to be flown in certain ways. So today I'm going to be trying to explain how these rules apply to your particular model. So first off, as I said, let's go through the main rules covering everybody and all flights. Then I'll put some jump points in where you can skip to uh, further along in the video to actually see what rules govern your specific uh, model. So look, first off, the main rule, altitude. Uh, in the UK, you can only fly up to 400 feet or 120 meters above the ground. And it's a criminal offense if you fly any higher. To be clear, buildings don't give you extra height and you can only fly over very tall buildings in very specific circumstances. Next up is VLOS or uh, visual line of sight. Your flights have got to be uh, made in a way that you can always keep your eye on the drone and they've now clarified things. This means actually seeing the drone itself, not just the general area of airspace that you're flying in. Third point is airports and aerodromes. It's illegal to fly within the flight restriction zones that surround airports. These are no-fly zones that span out around five kilometers from the airport with uh, extra bits to cover the shape of the runway. This one carries a prison sentence of up to five years. So in a nutshell, do not be flying anywhere near airports. Use the NATS Drone Assist app to always check if you're actually flying in unrestricted airspace. And finally, registration. The UK has two types of registration and most hobbyist flyers need both. The operator ID is required as the legal owner of the drone and that's got to be displayed on the outside of every drone that you fly. The flyer ID is for the person who's actually holding the remote and doing the flying. That ID can be just kept in your bag. But all drones except toys need an operator ID. So this includes the Mavic Mini and the Mini 2 because despite it only being 249 grams, it's now caught up in these new rules because it has a camera. So the operator ID is just nine pounds and it lasts for one year. You've got to be 18 years old to get an operator ID as it registers you as the legal owner. The separate flyer ID, as I said, is for the person doing the actual flying. You do an online training course and then you take a 40 question multiple choice uh, test and the pass mark is, uh, is 30. This is free and lasts for five years. All drones over 250 grams need a flyer ID, meaning that the Mini doesn't need a flyer ID, even though it needs an operator ID as the legal owner. But look, my advice is seeing as the flyer ID is what gets you to read all of the training notes and take the test and actually prove your knowledge and give you knowledge, my advice is very much to do that at the same time. It's only going to help you. Minimum age for a flyer ID is just 12, but remember the minimum age for an operator ID is 18, which basically means that if you're under 18, it's mum and dad that are taking the legal responsibility for your flying. And remember, international visitors also need to go through the same registration process, even if they're already registered in their own country. But it's done online, you don't need a physical address, so it shouldn't really be too hard. 
Finally, a quick word on permissions. Uh, landowners still very much have the right to stop you from uh, controlling and taking off from their land, but they cannot stop you from flying over their land as airspace is controlled by the CAA, not the landowner. That said though, make sure you're flying high enough so that you can't be accused of invading their privacy. Now, all of these rules are actually outlined on the drone registration website, which to its credit is incredibly easy to use and very well laid out. So I'll put a link to that below and I really advise you to ha have a read through it. As I said, no distinction anymore between commercial and hobbyists. They're all treated the same. You no longer need any special permission or training to undertake commercial work. All flights are assessed on risk. You basically have three categories of flight that relate to the risk of the people that may be nearby. Separately, you've got different classes of drones and that describes how dangerous the drone is itself or how heavy the drone is and how dangerous it is if it was to crash. So that's how you end up with this matrix of where you can fly and which drones you can fly in those particular areas. The more dangerous the flight or the heavier the drone, the more restricted the flight will be. And all of this is then set out handily in this little table uh, uh, under CAP 2012, which again, I'll put a link below. But again, it shows you exactly what you can fly where. So you have three main categories of flight. First of all, you have the open category, which is the least risk and can be flown by anybody following certain rules. Then you're gonna have the specific category, which means it's a higher risk and falls outside these rules. So you actually need specific permission from the Civil Aviation Authority to actually undertake those types of flights. And finally, you're gonna have the certified category of flights, which are deemed so complex and dangerous that frankly, the CAA are still working out how to administer them. So unsurprisingly today, all I'm gonna focus on is the open category of flying. The open category of flying has three subcategories that basically describe one, flying over people, two, flying near people, or three, flying far away from people. They're called A1, A2, and A3, and they are so fundamental to the new rules, I'm gonna put them up here and keep them up here and refer to them throughout the rest of this video. So first off is the A1 category, flying over people. And it is just that. This type of flight will involve flying directly over people, irrespective of whether they're involved with you or not. The rules state you cannot fly over crowds. And the CAA's definition of a crowd is basically any number of people that couldn't reasonably escape if the drone was uh, falling down. So 30 people in a small back garden would be deemed a crowd in their eyes. But fundamentally, A1 is, I suppose, the most restrictive type of flying and it has the smallest number of drones that are permitted to fly in that particular type of flight. The A2 subcategory of flying is flying near people and that basically means keeping a 30 meter or a 50 meter horizontal distance between the drone and any uninvolved people. That distance depends on the type of drone you're flying and whether or not you've had any additional training. You may have heard of the A2C of C. That is literally the certificate of competence for flying in A2 type flights. Now it's a one day course that lasts five years and I think many of you are gonna probably want to look into that because it does give you significant flying rights. The last subcategory of open flying is A3, flying far away from people. And it basically means keeping 50 meters between your drone and any uninvolved people and staying at least 150 meters from any residential, industrial, commercial, or recreational area. Now this is a bit of a nasty additional twist to this rule because whereas previously you had to stay 150 meters away from any congested area, the fact they've now included industrial and uh, recreational areas means that you can know, it's basically including old docks, uh, industrial estates, all parks, all playing fields, and even beaches. So you can no longer sneak down there early in the morning when there's nobody about and keep your 50 meters away from people. Instead, you now have this blanket ban from flying in these areas altogether if you're flying a drone that puts you in the A3 category. So those are the three subcategories of the open category of flying. And as said, that'll be the type of flight that the majority of us, certainly hobbyists, will be flying on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are cross-referenced by the type of drone that you're actually flying or using, okay? And drones will eventually be classified into five types. C0 being the lightest and safest, with up to C4 being the heaviest and potentially most dangerous in the event of a crash. Now, we had expected to start seeing these new numeric classifications on drones being sold during 2020. But the rules now state that the uh, deadline is actually the 1st of January, 2023. So until then, drone classifications are based on weight. 
And some of you may have heard of the term maximum takeoff mass, but that only refers to drones carrying the new numeric classifications. So all existing drones will have their classifications based on the normal takeoff weight. And this is important as it will give the Mini and the Mini 2 a significant advantage, which I'll go through in a little bit. Now this is where I have one of the biggest issues with the implementation of these new role, rules because they're all geared up for drone classifications that don't actually yet exist on the open market. So as of the 31st of December 2020, all existing drones became legacy drones that are unclassified. And legacy drones are treated very differently under the new rules than the same model drone that will eventually be sold with the new numeric classification. So look, for those of you wanting to jump to the rules uh, for your specific model, here are the jump points in the video where you can now skip to to find out the rules for your particular model. But I will be trying to keep things brief, so if you want the whole picture or you're planning to get a different drone in the future, maybe watch the rest of the video anyway. So we'll quickly start off with the big boys, over two kilograms like the DJI Inspire. Rule is very straightforward here. Without direct specific authorization from the CAA, you are gonna be stuck to be flying in the A3 far away from people category. This basically means staying at least 50 meters away from uninvolved people and 150 meters away from any residential, commercial, industrial or recreational area. Basically, you can only fly in open countryside. When these big drones do get uh, numeric classifications, they're gonna be class, class three or four, which means as they're over two kilograms, there's no difference, they'll remain stuck in the A3 category. However, most consumer drones that we use are under two kilograms, and this is where the rules, or the new rules, have caused a bit of confusion. So first off, I'm gonna cover the drones between 500 grams and two kilograms. It covers pretty much all these models here, including the 2 Pro, the Zoom, the original Mavic Pro, the DJI Phantoms, uh, the Mavic Air 2, uh, the Auto Evo, and the unique Typhoon. So as I mentioned, none of these drones currently have classification numbers so all of them will be immediately classed as legacy drones meaning they are also all relegated to a3 flying only far away from people 50 meters away from people and 150 meters away from residential industrial commercial or recreational areas so again all of these drones are suddenly relegated to just only being able to be flown pretty much in the open countryside now whilst this does seem pretty harsh because they're under two kilograms, you can take advantage of the one day course, the A2 CFC course that I mentioned earlier. And this will then allow you to fly in A2 type flights, basically allowing you to fly up to 50 meters from people, but crucially, you're not excluded from recreational industrial areas and the like. So yes, basically you need to do a day's training just to carry on flying where you can currently fly at the moment, which I think is pretty poor. And it's made even more unfair when you consider that uh, any model that's under 900 grams, so not including the 2 Pro and the Zoom, but all the other models, when they do start being sold with a numeric classification number on them, they will automatically be able to be flown in A1 type flights up to people, but not over people, without any additional training. Just to be clear though, when the legacy drone transition period ends, all of these existing legacy drones will be relegated to only being flown in the A3 open countryside category, even if you took the A2 CFC uh, level of competence, which I think is crazy and really unfair when you consider that these same models will by then be being sold with the new numeric classifications and be allowed to be flown with far greater freedom. This is why you may have heard the uh, term or, or people talking about the idea of the CAA entertaining the idea of retrospective classification, which would allow existing drones that are still exactly the same specifications to be retrospectively classified. CAA have been pretty clear that they don't want to entertain this at the moment, but I really do hope they see some sense and change their minds, because otherwise it's gonna be very unfair to pretty much every single drone owner in the UK at the moment and you can bet your bottom dollar you're gonna start seeing fake numeric classification uh, stickers popping up on eBay. Anyway, that's another story. Anyway, look, that was all quite messy, uh, so let's just do a very quick recap. If you own any of these models and it doesn't have a classification number, then it's classed as a legacy drone, and you can only fly in the A3 open countryside far away from people category. You can consider doing the one day A2, uh, A2 CFC course that will then allow you to fly in A2 flights as close as 50 meters to people, but that will only last until 2023, the end of 2023, after which you're relegated back to A3 flying. 
So that now brings me on to the sub 500 gram models like the original Mavic Air, the uh, Spark, and the Para Anafi. Now these again are all unclassified at the moment. So just like the bigger brothers, they're going to be automatically relegated to A3 open, fly, open countryside flying far away from people, 50 meters from uninvolved people, 150 meters away from residential, uh, industrial, commercial, and um, recreational areas. So again, very, very unfair. But this time, if you take the A2 CFC competency test, you actually get an even better uh, level of uh, freedom of flying. You can then fly in A1 type flying with no minimum distance from uninvolved people, but you can't intentionally fly over uninvolved people. But just like the others, as a legacy drone, when the legacy drone transition period ends, these drones will be relegated back to the A3 open countryside category of flying, irrespective of whether or not you've got that A2 CFC level of competence. And finally, I come on to the sub 250 gram drones, uh, which obviously includes the DJI Mavic Mini, the Mini 2, and other drones like the uh, Tello, the Parrot Mambo, Zyrotec Dobby, Snapped and SP500. Now, it's my guess that these type of drones, these sub 250 gram drones, are going to become even more popular uh, to consumers because they genuinely have the most freedom and uh, the least restrictions. If you own a Mini or a Mini 2 that doesn't have a classification number, then it's classed as an unclassified drone under 250 grams. And that truly gives you an amazing amount of freedom uh, of where you can fly. You get to fly in all A1 types of flights, meaning you can fly right over uninvolved people, as long as they're not crowds. There is no requirement for the additional A2 CFC training here. Even better, the legacy transition period doesn't apply to sub 250 gram drones, meaning come the end of 2023, nothing's gonna change and you'll continue to be able to be flying these uh, drones in A1 type flights. But for me, the biggest change here is that for the first time, you're gonna be able to fly inside residential, commercial, industrial and recreational areas and fly directly over uninvolved people without keeping a minimum distance. And this is a huge change, as long as you're not flying over a crowd, which of course does include shopping high streets and the like. But it means for the first time, people are gonna be able to take off from their back gardens and fly over other people's houses and gardens, which to me is crazy, especially as you don't actually need any additional training. So there are many people, myself included, that kind of wonder how long this little window will last. And to be honest, I really do think that is down to how many incidents are reported, how many issues are reported, because this is where people, I think, really need to use their common sense and not be flying low over gardens and low over houses. Anyone that doesn't fly a drone generally seems to hate drones for some reason, and the media never misses an opportunity to slate us. So, I would absolutely urge you to use your common sense. If you are taking off from your back garden, get up high straight away. Don't be hovering over other people's uh, properties. Just fly and get the video footage that you want, and that will probably avoid any situations arising. Now, the other little point to keep in mind for the Mini and the Mini 2 is that this exemption only applies to models under 250 grams if they're sold unclassified, which of course the Mini and the Mini 2 are currently at the moment. Once they start being sold with the C0 classification, then the rules take the maximum takeoff mass rather than the weight as the deciding factor. And because the maximum takeoff mass is always higher than the actual weight to allow for accessories and the like, they will suddenly drop out of this particular exemption. So my advice there is that whilst the Mini and the Mini 2 are being sold unclassified, you may consider buying one because they will continue to be the least restricted and most flexible 4K drone on the market. So look, awful lot to take in there, summarising what are fundamentally very complex rules, but hopefully that's simplified things for you. I'm sure many of you have got some uh, thoughts on this and I would really love to hear them. So get smashing that keyboard and let me know exactly what you think. Remember, do keep things civil if you happen to disagree with somebody else's point of view, because everybody has got a point of view on how these rules are going to affect them flying. If you do know anyone else that flies a drone, maybe do forward them the link to this video, because uh, they are very complex rules, and I've done my best to try and simplify things and hopefully uh, make them a little bit easier to understand. Anyway, like I said, comment below, let me know what's on your mind. Either way, um, Give me a little thumbs up, it really does help the video. 
If you haven't, hit the sub and ding that little bell, get notified each time I put something out. But anyway, I hope you're still staying safe and sane. Until next time, you have fun and happy flying.